Hey, Lady Rose. <laughs> hey, Lexia. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, he is. God, you, yes, hallelujah. We said I hope on you. We said I hope on your love. Hey, Sharon. Hey, Keisha. Yes. Who is the everlasting God? You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. We said I hope on you. We said I hope on your love. Hey, Karen, Glenda, Marche. Hey, Sister Virginia. God. I like to start my videos, you know, just with giving God some praise, y'all, because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's always worthy. He's always worthy. If he don't do anything, which he's always doing something, but if he don't do what you asked of him, he's still worthy. We said I hope on your love. We said, I hope on the one who is the everlasting God. Hey, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, God. Woo! When you truly believe he is the everlasting father, he is the everlasting God, y'all. Ain't nobody above him. Ain't nobody above him. What? Ain't nobody above him. Hallelujah. 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 I'm trying to start. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He is so worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. No, he didn't do nothing for me special. He woke me up. He woke me up. That's enough. He woke me up. I'm here another day. Hallelujah. I got. I get to be here another day with my family. I get to do what I enjoy doing. I get to give him praise one more day. I, one more day. One more day. I get to come on here and share with you all one more day. I get to make a cooking video one more day. <laughs> Ooh, just for who he is just for who he is hallelujah you know my heart was uh sad this morning because oftentimes we feel like the only way somebody should be praising god is if god has done something for them you know people look at you strange because you're just so full of gratefulness and 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 joy i'm just so thankful today but i'm thankful every day but i remember a time where i used to complain about everything and that's what i wanted to talk to you all today about is complaining how you can go from complaining to being grateful we need to go from complaining to being grateful it is so easy to complain so easy and if you don't know if you're complaining, I'm finna help you out. The definition of complaining is expressing dissatisfaction or annoyance about something. And I am gonna add on to that or about someone because we all know somebody. I was the somebody I knew who was always complaining and I knew it. That's the thing. Well, at first I didn't know it took the Lord to show me through the Holy Spirit seeking him. See, we got to seek God and say, whatever is in me, God, that is not like you show me. God, help me. I don't want to walk around and be a crooked Christian. I don't want to walk around and be wrong. I don't want to walk around and be telling people the wrong thing. I don't want to walk around with a nasty attitude talking about I love Jesus. I don't want to walk around holding grudges and being mean talking about I love the Lord. That don't even go together. I said, God, everything in me that's not like you, show me, God. Deal with me, God. You do the change, God, because I can't do it. And he showed me one day you all how I complained I was a complainer and it it annoys me 
just hearing me say certain things, I'd be like, oh my God, you ever say something and then you, 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 if you replay it, you hear yourself saying it, but it's too late. You didn't already release it into the atmosphere. See, our words have power. Now, I ain't going to lie to you and sit here and say I don't still complain, but I'm a whole lot better at it because when I released that thing, I would cringe. Why did I have to say something? Why couldn't I just be quiet? I mean, when I tell you I have fasted and prayed about this thing, I do not like being a complainer. It's easy to complain, but it makes us unpleasant to be around. And if you can't help it, like me, you know, I was in a place where I couldn't even help it. it it, before I knew it, I was saying something negative. I'd be driving in my car and before I knew it, dang, they had to pull in front of me. Why do these people drive so slow? Oh, why the light always red? Why it always takes so long? You in the store, why this have to be? Why they always out of this? Every time I come in here, we're releasing negativity. And then I just got to the point I got tired of myself. I just start praying, Lord, help me to be quiet. I don't even want to say nothing. I just don't even want to say anything. I was complaining so much. I got tired of myself and I prayed and asked God to help me to be quiet. I literally was praying, asking God to help me to be quiet. And the Bible says to be slow to speak, quick to listen and slow to anger. And I prayed that prayer and prayed that prayer and prayed that prayer. But the main thing, y'all, as, as believers, as Christians, we can't change if, for one, we don't know what's wrong. You know, and that's why it's important that we have God's Holy Spirit and that we be sensitive and that we pay attention because we should want the Holy Spirit to change us. We should want to be how God want us to be. We should want him to change us. We shouldn't want to get saved and still watch that nasty stuff. We shouldn't want to be saved and still speak in profanity. We shouldn't want to be saved and still drinking alcohol. We shouldn't want to be saved and still fornicating. If um, Let me tell you something. When you get saved, yeah, there are things that you're still going to do, but you should be praying and asking God to help you. You should be doing things yourself that you will get delivered to. You should be trying to meet God at some place. We can't meet him halfway, but baby, you can meet him somewhere. You can take a step. You can do something. You can try not to curse. You can turn off that bad thing. You can stop watching certain stuff. It's certain things that we can do to help the situation and show God that I really want to change. I desire it. And I mean, I'm telling you all, I read books. I talked to people. I was like, Lord, I'm tired of me. I got tired of me. <clears throat> Many people who complain don't even know they're complaining. They don't know. And it could be that they just don't care. But if you're seeking God, he will show you things. And God has a loving way to do it. He has a loving way that he show us things about ourselves where, you know, you feel that conviction like, oh, Lord, but you want to change because of your love for God and your relationship. And he's just so sweet. You actually want to change and you begin to seek ways to change. You begin to get in his word and say, God, how can I get this right? I don't want to be a complainer. Oh, I don't want to be speaking negative things all the time. I don't want to speak negative things at all. Help me. God to change. Help me to get my life right. Now we want to switch from being a complainer, which for those that just came in complaining, the definition is expressing dissatisfaction or annoyance about something. And I say, or someone or someone grateful. Now being grateful means feeling or showing an appreciation of kindness or thankfulness or being thankful. Does God not deserve it? God doesn't owe us anything. He doesn't owe us anything. If God don't do nothing, he's done enough. And the thing about it, I don't even like to say if God don't do nothing else, he's done enough. And the reason I don't like to say that is because God is doing something all the time. See, when I got up this morning, that was God blowing air into my body. That was him giving me the ability just to get up out the bed. See, that was God for me to be able to walk in my bathroom and use the bathroom function properly, everything going right. That was God that nothing happened over my home that he covered and protected me. See, that was God that my children woke up and they live and breathing. See, that was God. I ain't getting no phone call. None of my relatives died. See, that's God. He's always doing something. He's always doing something because God is God. He lets the sun sit up in the sky for crying out loud. He's always doing something. So it's no point in saying if he don't do nothing else. It's no point in saying that God didn't do nothing for me. He's always doing something. We just got to 
We got to sit there and see what God is doing. Just look, just open your eyes. Just walk outside, baby, and look up in the sky. Look at nature. That's God. He created those animals. He created everything. That's God. He deserves all the glory, honor, and praise. And it was just in my heart this morning that people nowadays think that just because you say, thank you, God, it's something that he did. But no, God is God. He deserves the glory, honor, and praise. And we got to get to the place where we just praise God for being God. He wants us to praise him just for who he is. Stop looking for him to do that thing for you. God will take care of his children. We shouldn't always be looking at his hands. We should be looking for going after the heart of God and wanting to be like him. And no matter what's going on, it don't matter if you don't do this or that that I asked you to do. You are still God and he deserves all of the praise. He said, even if you don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. Let me tell you something. God will be praised whether humans walk around complaining or not. He's going to be praised. He said the nature will praise him. He's going to be praised. But why not praise him? Why not? What has he done to you? He's done nothing but good things for us. Nothing but good things. He even blesses. He said, the, the Bible says the, the sun rises on the, the just and the unjust. He blesses everyone. He blesses everyone. We're not deserving of nothing. We don't, he don't owe us nothing. He don't owe us nothing. It was just on my heart, y'all. Y'all don't know how many people ask me, why are, why are you praising God, basically? What do you mean? What do you mean? He's God. I don't need a reason. I don't, I don't sit there and talk about, well, God, because I got an increase today. Hallelujah. It ain't even about that. God, you're God. Thank you, God. Thank you for making me. Thank you, Jesus, for going to the cross. That's the one that's on my heart every day. I thank Jesus for what he did, for what he endured for me, for going to the cross, for living a selfless life, for knowing the reason and the purpose that he came here, but yet he still do it. He knew how people would be. He knew how selfish people would be. He knows everything. He knew it all going up to that cross, but he yet and still, he got up there and didn't utter nothing. He didn't open his mouth. He just got up there and died for me. That's why he died so that I could have a life more abundantly. That's why I praise him. And not only that, because the story don't end right there. See, you got to understand something. He then went to the hell and took the keys back. Okay. And then God raised him up on the third day and he lives. He rose again and he is coming back. So that's why. That's why I praise him. I don't need no other reason. That's enough. That is enough. Because baby, even if you homeless, you still breathing. Even if we're homeless, we're still breathing. You still alive. So anytime that something bad happened, there's always that opportunity for things to get better. There's always an opportunity for things to get better. So we got to stop focusing on the negative because that's what causes us to complain. And it's a heart issue really because that's what God showed me. It was a heart issue. It was things in my heart, and then I had to get my mind right. Our minds have to be renewed by the word of God because out of the heart, the, the mouth will speak. Whatever's in you is going to come out. <clears throat> there are ways that we can practice being grateful. God wants us to be grateful. He wants us to be grateful because he deserves it. I don't know how God feels when we just complain or we don't thank him just because I don't know, but I can, I can only imagine what I would feel like. Like I said before in, in other situations, I explained on other videos, if my kids only thank me when I did things, sometimes you know how it feels when somebody just give you a note or a card to say, just because of who you are, just because I just thank God for who you are. I don't know if y'all ever got them kind of notes, but I have gotten little notes from my kids. They said, Mom, I just love you because you're just a great mom. I think about all the things you've done for me. They don't even, you know, make it about just the shoes or something like that. That stuff makes you feel good. But I can only imagine what God feels like. But there are ways, Lord. I mean, there are ways, you all, that we can practice to have a grateful lifestyle. And I wrote down a few ways. One, we can read scripture about the things God has done. The Bible is full of things that God has done. It's full from the beginning to the end, baby, starting with the creation of the world. 
It's full of it from the beginning to the end. So reading the scriptures about God's goodness, we can write out a gratitude list. We did that in January uh, with one with my weight loss group. We wrote, we wrote out every day in January. We wrote something that we were grateful for. And I, I still have my list and I go back sometimes and I read through those things, you know, because it's just it's amazing of all the things you can think of. You don't really think about it until you got to write some down and you'll come up with all types of things to be grateful for. We have a lot to be grateful for. We do. We just allow circumstances and situations to cloud our minds and to get us off focus of, of what truly is important. And that's the will of God. Three, create a grateful environment separate from negative people this is so important now listen if you get diagnosed with cancer the last thing you need around you is somebody tell me, oh you gonna die oh how long they say oh three months man let me tell you my friend they told her three months she died in two weeks oh you need to no surround yourself with people of faith surround yourself with positive people you need that because what will happen is when you are weak, they will be strong. They will help to encourage you. When you are strong, they may be weak. As iron sharpens iron, you need to be around people who are like-minded, people who can encourage you, uplift you, so you can grow, grow, grow. That's how it's supposed to go. You don't need no negativity around you, especially when you believe in God for something. You really don't because you don't need nothing trying to bring you down. Read the story of Job. And don't watch or listen to negative things. You don't need to do that. It's just going to it's going to make things worse. It's not going to help the situation. So don't listen or watch negative things. Number four, pray and ask God to change your heart. That's a big one. Ask God to change you. And don't stop there. Keep seeking him. Keep seeking him about that thing. Ask him to change you. And I'm telling you, the more time you spend with him and read his word, you will be changed because it's impossible to spend time in God's presence and not be changed because he is just that powerful. He's so powerful. His presence is powerful. Just his presence, just his presence alone can change your life, will change your life has changed my life five praise god no matter the situation you know when i want something from god you know what i say lord whether you do it or not because i say your will be done i may want this or i may have a plan to do that but if god doesn't allow it to happen or he says no he's still good he's still god and we got to get to that place where we trust him god knows what he's doing we're the ones that don't know what we're doing. We think we do. We think we do. But we don't know what God knows. God is all-knowing. He's all-knowing. So when we go to him about things, you may be mad at God because he didn't give you that spouse or he didn't give you that, that job or whatever, that promotion. But God knew that if he gave you that spouse, that spouse was going to murder you in five years. Or God knew if he gave you that job, you were going to be fired because the company or the company is going to go down in a couple years. See, God knows what he's doing. He's always protecting us. So if you're living in him and for him, there's no way you will lose. There's no way you're going to lose out. I don't care what happens. There's no way. There's no way. It's impossible because there's no failure in him. He knows everything. He knows what he's doing. We just got to get to that point where we just trust him. Just trust him. When you ask him for it, if he give it to you, great. But if he don't, God, I still thank you because I know you know what you're doing. I trust your judgment. I trust what you allow. I want to do your will. Whatever you say, God, and it'll be okay. And you You'll find out that there is so much joy and peace. You'll find out that you're not going to be sad at all. You'll find out it'll, it'll just create this even more gratefulness in you because God just takes care of you. It's amazing the things he will show you just by you obeying, obeying him and trusting him. He will show you things. People have no idea the things God has shown me about some stuff, but I ain't going to get into all of that. But God, I thank you just because I trusted him. When he did say no, just because I trusted him. Hallelujah. We got to just trust him. Trust him. Y'all, we got to trust him. I don't think I have anything else. <laughs> but, <clears throat> excuse me. But that was on my heart this morning, y'all. We got to stop complaining. We got to stop complaining. We have everything to be grateful for. Everything. Everything. 
Stop looking at what the next person got and be grateful for what you got. Be grateful. Be grateful for your health. Be grateful for your eyesight. Be grateful for your legs, all your toes, your fingers and your arms. I'm telling you, be grateful. You know, it shouldn't take you seeing somebody in a worse position for you to be grateful. It shouldn't take you going to a third world country or, or having something going on in the land. Some, oh, this there's a virus going on. You know, it shouldn't take all of that. We should just be grateful just because of who God is. We should be grateful just for where we are because of what he allows and just his grace. Man, he can wipe out this whole city. He can wipe, up, wipe out your whole town. He can send a storm to take everybody out. And we don't even realize how powerful God is. God can do whatever he want to do. The promise was he would never kill all mankind, but he can do whatever he want to do. So the best thing it is to just be grateful. Be grateful. Just be grateful. God, I thank you. Whatever it is. God, I thank you. God, I thank you for my home. I thank you, God, for a roof over my head. I thank you for a vehicle to drive. I thank you. I don't have to be out in the heat. I thank you for air conditioning. Whatever you got, be grateful for what you got. Everybody's gratitude list will be different, but it's okay. God, I thank you. We all have one thing in common. We're still alive. We all have one thing in common. We're all living and breathing. And that right there is what you need right now. That's, that's all you need. That in Jesus, honey, and the rest, the rest is history. <laughs> so be grateful. <laughs> so that's all I got. I love you all. I hope I said something to help y'all. And I'll see you soon. Praise God. I see you, Michelle. <laughs> all right, y'all. I got to go. I got an appointment, so I'm going to go ahead and go. Be blessed.